Right, before I start this review, I want to ask you one serious question. Who actually expected Ferrari to win today, before the weekend started? Because I certainly didn't, for starters. Um, a lot of us wrote Ferrari off this weekend, you know, it's a track that shouldn't have suited their car, it was all about aero, not about power, we know how bad that chassis is on that Ferrari this season, um, and we've all been proven completely wrong this weekend, Ferrari have been solid, probably since the third practice session, and then in the qualifying, uh, Charles Leclerc taking another pole position as well, very lucky not to get the 1-2 in qualifying, as Hamilton just pipped Vettel to that second place uh, right at the last minute. Um, and I must say I am so, so surprised that actually Ferrari won today, but doubly surprised because Sebastian Vettel also took his first win since the Belgian Grand Prix last year. Massive, massive relief off his shoulders, definitely. Um, and for those who doubted me when I said, um, well, before the summer break, when I said Ferrari will have a better second half of the season, they've won all three races so far since, since we've come back, so... It was laughing now. Um, so before I jump into the review and explain what actually happened and give my thoughts and here in Lyle's as well, I'll just run through quickly the classifications. Um, now this is before any penalties have, have taken in place. I know there's a couple of incidents that haven't been um, officially awarded penalties yet, so this is just what uh, the instant race results are. So Sebastian Vettel takes another Grand Prix, his fifth win at Singapore as well, uh, which is a record now of all time, five Grand Prix wins at Singapore. Uh, in first place, his teammate comes home, Charles Leclerc, very, very disappointed he will be, he will not be happy uh, standing on that podium in Singapore. Max Verstappen, a very quiet Grand Prix in third place, the two Mercedes in, uh, in fourth and fifth, Hamilton fourth, Bottas in fifth place, we'll get onto them in a little bit. Alex Albon in sixth place, Lando Norris, now I forgot Lando Norris even existed after this Grand Prix, I just, I never heard of him. Uh, I'll, I'll, at any given point, he just had a little bit of battle halfway through the Grand Prix, and then I, ne I never seen him before or after. Very, very strange one in seventh place. Pierre Gasly in eighth, Holtenberg in ninth, and Antonio Giovinazzi rounds up the top ten, uh, coming home in tenth place. Roman Grosjean rewards himself with um, after his uh, announcement that he's staying at Haas for next season in eleventh place. No points, very unlucky. Carlos Sainz in twelfth place. Now that is a very solid job from him, bearing in mind that he was a lap down uh, during the course of the Grand Prix at the very start of the race. Lance Stroll in the racing point in 13th place, Dan Ricciardo at 14th, Danny Kivar at 15th, Robert Kubica at 16th, K Mag 17th, and your three retirements for this race was Kimi Reitman, Sergio Perez, and George Russell. Now, starting off this Grand Prix was very boring, wasn't it? I think the first 15 laps was just awful. The race got underway, uh, Leclerc got a very, very good start, Hamilton and Vettel went in a battle. I had a feeling that Vettel would be quite aggressive going into the first sector because that's where the Ferrari is very strong. That's where they can unleash the mighty power that they have behind them. Uh, nearly got away, well, nearly got away from Hamilton. He nearly overtook him. Hamilton using all of his talent, all of all of his, all of his experience to keep Vettel at bay. Um, and that was pretty much it in terms of the front runners. But however, behind, it was quite a bit of carnage. I'll try and remember all the incidents because there was quite a few throughout the course of the Grand Prix at the start and at the end. Um, so I think it was the uh, George Russell got his uh, front wing wiped off by Daniel Ricciardo as well. I think that was just a, a little racing incident, wasn't it, as well. Um, I think Ricciardo just had, had his car pretty much in, well, he could say the wrong place at the wrong time almost, but I think it was just, it was like the first lap incident. Nothing really went from that. And then there was another incident with Carlos Sainz. I think it was... Um, with Antonio Giovinazzi, I think it was, um, got his rear, got a rear puncture, went in the pits, a uh, long, long pit stop was about, I think it was there for about a minute, uh, came uh, came back out and obviously, obviously was a lap down, very, very disappointing from him. Um, as like I said, there was nothing really happening throughout the course of that Grand Prix, it was just like watching pain dry, I suppose, it was like, what is this, what, what are we watching here? Um, we've had a very, you know, five good Grand Prix off the back, and then this one was just like, well, all right, let's back to reality for Formula One. I was getting a bit bored in a way, but this was the Singapore Grand Prix. It is a very long Grand Prix, and everything was going to happen right, right at the very end. But then everything started taking shape once the stri well, once the pit stops started to come into play. Uh, Ferraris of uh, Ferrari Sebastian Vettel pitted first, which is quite surprising. Bear in mind that Leclerc was leading the Grand Prix at this point. Uh, Vettel comes in first, Le then Leclerc comes in a lap after him, comes out. And he's behind his teammate. Very confusing. And I just, I want to, I just want to mention as well that a lot of people are getting annoyed with Mercedes's um, pit crew coming out of the garage, um, trying to fake a pit stop and then going straight back in. They actually did this twice. I'm sure they did it. I don't think any 
uh, the, I don't think the commentators picked it up, but I've seen them standing outside uh, the, the pit box when both uh, Leclerc and Vettel came in. So they've done that twice, so whether they tried to pull a dummy, and it nearly worked, I suppose, but uh, I don't know if that was the case, but I'm pretty certain I've seen them twice when both cars pitted. Um, and then it was like, right, okay, what's 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 happening here? Why have, why has Vettel been pitted first over Leclerc? That was a bit that was a bit strange. Uh, but I had a feeling that they might have swapped positions, but Vettel's pace was actually quite good. It was quite impressive. Um, and then Mercedes pitted Bottas. Uh, he came out well behind of of the of, of uh, them three, and then Hamilton was out, pretty much just about what was it five or six laps just. Gaining, 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 well, trying to gain anyway. And then you have that like little telemetry thing where it tells you the chances of an overtake on the bottom. Uh, Vettel's chances, or well, Hamilton's chances slowly decreasing as the laps went on. Um, but then the three cars of Leclerc, Hamilton, uh, sorry, Leclerc, Vettel, and Verstappen, not in that order, uh, all came across uh, three other cars. I think it was Giv, no, it was Giovinazzi, yes, it was Giovinazzi, Ricardo, and one of the Toro Rosses. It was actually Gasly. Uh, they were coming up to them, and that, I think everyone was was like, "Oh, have Mercedes actually pulled off a blinder, seeing this traffic, and left Hamilton out there, so that when when Hamilton pits, hopefully that the cars have lost that much time that he can either go ahead of them or just in between them, and then cause havoc there on in." And that didn't, that wasn't the case, was it? Hamilton came out miles behind uh, those three cars, the two Ferraris and the Red Bull, and everyone was left kind of scratching their heads and like, "Right, let's see how this pans out," because. Hamilton is now on six laps fresher tyres, and it's a very high demand and tight, well, high, very high demand and tyre track, isn't it, at Marina Bay? But then you had three safety cars. I think the first one was about halfway through the Grand Prix, and I was like, oh, well, by the way things are going, we're not, we aren't going to get a safety car. We actually got three at the very end, which certainly helped Ferrari's um, strategy as well, because saving the tyres as well, that would have helped them a lot. I think George Russell got a bit of a tangle with the Haas of Roman Grosjean. Grosjean, very confused as to what he did. Again, George Russell came on the team radio, quite surprised. Then a few laps later, I think Perez got a mechanical problem. His he just shut down altogether. And then Kimi Raikkonen retired uh, with, I think it was, Danny Kvyat. Came out of nowhere, Danny Kvyat. The torpedo is now rising once again. Um, it, I think Kimi Raikkonen was quite surprised as to how far back uh, Danny Kvyat came from. Made contact and another safety car from that. There also was a few incidents as well, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But before I do that, I just want to give you Lyle's thoughts on the Grand Prix. He says, uh, last time Ferrari had a 1-2 was Hungary 2017. And 392 days um, have uh, days have gone since Vettel last won a, last won a race. Both statements uh, changed to date. Very, very true. And there's a poll by Charles yesterday, three in a row. Yes, and he actually now has more pole positions this season than Lewis Hamilton. Charles has five, Hamilton has five. Four. So I think that's now one in five, sorry, one in seven Grand Prix that Hamilton hasn't got pole, and now one in five races that he's actually won. So Hamilton's a bit off form. What's what's going on? Is just the development as development of the car gone towards next season, and, and they just lost track of this season because they know both titles are more or less wrapped up. Or is Hamilton losing his speed? I'll let you guys decide that one. Um, how uh, Val 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 then goes up and says, "Amazing pole by Charles," as, as I said before. Uh, then he goes, says, Seb needed a win today, uh, make sure he did, and, and Mercedes got their strategy wrong, with Lewis pitting him six laps after Charles, that was a gamble. Three, three safety cars make it, makes it 16 individual safety cars appearances in Singapore. This win comes at the best for Seb. Charles has gone from fifth in the World Drivers' Championship to third in just two races. Lando and Carlos have an amazing weekend for McLaren. Yes, I thought, I thought for me, Carlos Sainz, being a lap down, the safety car did help him, and then he got, you know, started overtaking very, very well, very, very well indeed, uh, at the expense of a couple of drivers who were caught napping by defending one one car, and then the other car kind of overtook, and that, and then that car that was trying to defend also lost two places in one corner. So as a McLaren fan, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Uh, good race by by Danny Kivan. Oh, he also goes on to say that Nico Hultenberg is already in Sochi, which is the next round in Russia. Good race by Daniel Ricciardo and two Alfa Romeos until Kimi retired. Uh, Giovinazzi was the first driver to lead outside the top three since Williams did at Silverson in 2015. What uh, what started as a boring Grand Prix ended as a great race. Race rating 8 out of 10. Driver of the day, Sebastian Vettel. Honourable mention, Antonio Giovinazzi in Team of the Weekend, Ferrari. Then he goes on to say, at Monza we were on 900 subs. Uh, and now one race afterwards we are on 940. Thank you everyone. Yeah, that is 
very, very good progress. Um, for me, driver of the day, Sebastian Vettel. Um, it's, it's a hard one to call driver of the day because I know Vettel, yeah, he kept out of trouble and he very he, he did get lucky when he had that, um, that massive aggressive move on, on Pierre Gasly for P2. That could have cost them the, the race win, but ultimately that was a race winning move, wasn't it? Um, but apart from that, he didn't really do that much. But then again, he did keep it out of, the, out, out, of the, out of the barriers. He did drive a superb race, kept out in front, kept his teammate Charles Leclerc behind him. Kept, when he was under pressure, he dealt with it. So, yeah, you could say. I, I think I'll also say a good mention to Carlos Sainz as well. Max Verstappen had a quiet Grand Prix, but, you know, uh, he finished in third place as well. Um, yeah, race rating 8 out of 10. I probably would have given it a 7 out of 10, I thought, like... At the start of it was very boring. It did get good. It did get good at the end of the Grand Prix. We have given lower ratings for quite similar kind of races in the past, um, but I'll I'll go over on this one eight out of ten because it, it did end pretty well. So yeah, I think what we've learned from this Grand Prix is um, expect the unexpected definitely because none of us expected, as like I said, Ferrari to win uh, to win the Grand Prix. Certainly proved a lot of people wrong. Has this now kicked off Ferrari season? Can they go to Sochi? And actually take a win. Their first ever win there. Because I think it's only Mercedes have won that Grand Prix. Since uh, since um, its very first race in 2014. So they're coming off um, off the back of three wins in a row. Two for Charles. One for Seb. What can they do in the next in, in the next race? Um, and also as well that we mentioned, mentioned before about George Russell's retirement. That's actually his first retirement of the season. His first retirement in Formula 1. And now that's now at least one team has got every... Well at least one driver, one driver has retired... From every Grand Prix this season, so that incredible that incredible run from Williams has now come to an end. A couple of incidents, a couple of incidents as well. I think the move that I said about Danny Kvyat coming in on Kim Reitman might get a penalty for that. I'm not I'm not too sure as well. I think there was an incident before where Grosjean went off on the track and then didn't rejoin by going round the bollard. I don't know if that's still under under investigation. I'm not not, not too sure on that one, but nevertheless. Quite a good Grand Prix as well. Very, very pleased with that, how it ended. Sebastian Vettel, I'm very, very pleased that he actually got a win this season. I'm not particularly a Vettel fan, but I do like I do like to see other drivers doing well. I like, I'm like i loving seeing Charles where he is at the moment. Vettel, like I said, massive, massive weight off his shoulders. If you can go to Sochi or anywhere else at the, between now and the end of the season and win more races, it'll be even better. Um, and I probably will take back something I said when I was on um, when I when I did when I did the de when I did the debate show. I think it was with Le Breaking about the Sebastian Vettel. Like what now for him? I think I said that he won't win a Grand Prix from now till the end of the season because there's no there's no any well any tracks there where he could possibly win a Grand Prix or that Ferrari could be you know doing well at. Um, proven wrong as well. But I'd, like I said before, I did say that Ferrari would have a good end to the season, and so far. So good for them. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Grand Prix, your drive of the day, your overall your overall opinion of the race. Um, and as well, just as well on the Prediction League as well, I'll be posting out on our Facebook page and on our Twitter page. Links will be to, links will be there down below to our social medias. I'll be posting the, the league table about the Prediction League. Um, I don't think anyone predicted Vettel to win. I think a few, predict, a few predicted for him to be on the podium, but I don't think anyone predicted him to win the Grand Prix. If he, if he did... If you did, well done to you for that. Um, and go and check out our debate show that came out yesterday with the guys at F1 Fanatics about Nico Hultenberg. And then next week is another busy schedule as we head into round 16 uh, for the Russian Grand Prix. Uh, the preview comes out on Thursday. Then we've got our new series as well, uh, Drivers Decoded. Another driver we'll be talking about. Go and check out our last episode on that about Mark Webber. If you haven't already, Saturday, the, the debate show as always. And on Sunday, you'll be, you'll be watching us once again for the race review at Sochi. What can happen that weekend? Can Ferrari conjure up a surprise? Or can Mercedes just keep up their 100% winning record in Russia? But anyways, guys, thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching as well. If you have liked this video, then please give it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here. And as like I said, leave your opinions in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you later.